isn't it. It's what? What? Got it. I got it. Right. It all right. What? My bamboo, my bala bamboo. Shut up already. Rigid reducing washer. 
and on there it has the size for instance an inch and a quarter to an inch which is the size of my uh, pipe and this is the rigid conduit lock nut okay. putting these things on I have found that it does it's no good to try to stick this here and somehow secure it and then go inside and do it it's actually easier to drop it from the inside out and then you can fidget with it once it's out so we're going to try that now you can see the hole in there you're going to want to bend the tab a little bit to sort of match the uh, the drum and of course as you tighten it down that space will go away all right so let's put this in here The reason why I say it's easier this way is because now I can put my ring on here. Okay. And as I'm threading, I can hold the inside of the pipe and add some tension. Now I just need to tighten that down. There's my ball cock. And of course here's my elbow for the intake. And if we measure from here to here we have about 20, whoops. From there to here we get about, wow, 20, six inches and they come in automatic lengths of about 24 which should be fine not 36 so back to Home Depot I go because I didn't make a list and didn't follow the instructions of the Brethren UDS ultimate UDS thread one of the things I like to do is I like to be able to take things apart later so in my opinion it's worth boy a little bit of thread compound on there so that when we put that in there let's put it in a lot of these two, you can come off pretty easy this goes for the inside of your ball cock as well especially there because you got a brass coupling uh, next to cast iron now I've drilled through a couple of holes here uh, for this coupling which holds the pipe. Remember this is the bottom and looks like I want to come in a little bit don't I? So let's do that. How's that look? Uh, a little bit more. So drill two holes here. Yeah, it's five six. It's a five sixteenth U bolt. Uh, it needs to be long enough to go to the other side. If you get the cheapest one, that's usually that usually stops here. It won't work. Okay, so here's the attachment on the outside, as you can see, going through to the inside. I put a lock a washer on each. I'm not too worried about the length because I can come back with my cutting wheel. And I'll tighten those down, and that'll be it on that side. All right, so here we have our finished inlet. Um, on these screws right here, I really just tightened them up until the threads ended. So there's a slight bend to this. It might be able to go in a little bit more, but it won't twist. And uh, you can always, for good measure, Give these puppies a good try. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So, 
that's where we are now. One inlet over here, another inlet right over here if you can see it, and I'll put another one over here. Okay, we got the nuts, or the bolts, going through on this side. They're a little long. For the base, I wouldn't even heard you coming. This is it. That's when Sherlock Holmes and his smarter brother Puffy. I'll let you work with that. I also told me that more money bring you problems from the gate. The fluffy, overweight, blinded by the jealous hate. Working time, working overtime. Meaning that it's in the center. It's hard to lift it off, where if it's offset, it's easy to undo the seal. Okay, now my plan is I'm going to have another one of these on this side. So this is going to be the center, and that's where my thermometer is going to go. That's a pilot hole for my thermometer. It's going to be, you know, half inch. So I'm going to be drilling at three inches and eight inches. Three inches and eight inches. Okay. Now I have a pipe on this side. I'm going to add a pipe on this side. So I have two controls right over here on this side, but it's not here yet. So the center between those two is going to be where my um, thermometer goes. I'm going to have a rack support at three inches and at eight and three quarters. Three and eight and three quarters. I know that's a little different from what some people are doing, but that's the way I'm going to do mine. Because I really wanted a little bit of space here. Okay, so now we have our pilot holes drilled out. Remember, this is just for the thermometer, so pilot holes drilled out. We're going to be using uh, these bolts right here. Uh, this, the head of this is actually going to be on the inside so that the rack can smoothly move along this, and then this will go through the drum um, wall and bolt on the other side and uh, we'll tighten it up. But we're going to need to drill the right size and I like it a little snug so we're using one size above a, a, a size here uh, so so we're going to use this drill bit. Okay. So here you should get a better idea. Here we have the head of the bolt out. There's your nut. Washer, other side, washer, nut. And we will tighten this up from the inside. And there we go. There they all are. Here's my friend Joey. Say hi, Joey. Hi. Okay, now let me talk here. One of the reasons why I adopted this system, it came from Norcore Redneck of the Barbecue Revenue, is that when you do it like this and you have the head there and I don't know you you feel like your temperature or you need to move your meat instead of picking up your meat 
and moving it move the whole rack without worrying about it going down. Also, notice everything is triangulated. The reason why is when you start getting four, um, then you have grates that, that jiggle. So three does just fine. Isn't that right, Joey? Hi! <laughs> Obviously here, this is the bottom of the barrel. We don't need total seal, but I, I'm going to tighten up this by just putting a couple of spot welds in these areas just to tighten them up a little bit. I could weld all the way around if I wanted to, but well, that's a waste of energy. Alright, I welded at the bottom so you really can't tell once I polish it up later before I give it a good paint job. <coughs> <coughs> Now, it's time to lay on the you-know-what. This is just simply canola oil, cheap stuff. I'm spraying all the way down to the bottom. Alright, this is what it looks like when it's been sprayed inside. Nice coated. I suggest you do is after your first or second smoke you see any bare spots spray them again for long you won't have to be doing it I sprayed all the way down to the bottom too okay get ready to season this these right heel here um, I'm leaving on like this or rather I'll probably just cut them and put some a thread lock on them so that they don't come undone uh, but I want to remove the handle and if after I season this uh, to paint it. These grooves right here collect a lot of rust. They sometimes get dented if you drop them. So, and also, drums are notorious for getting out of round. If you go with the Weber uh, top, you won't have that as much problem. But cleaning them out helps you form a seal that'll work. And it also helps you take it off. And so we're gonna spray that too. seasoned up. Now I think I'm going to go get another post, pipe, and fitting. Okay, so $43 later, I got my second set on there. It is secured. Um, that's basically what it looks like. It's going to drive me crazy, the settings of the handles, and they both, you know, um, <laughs> and I have cut off the bolts at the bottom. So we are ready to smoke. Okay, <coughs> excuse me, this is my fire uh, basket. Uh, the measurements are big and ass <laughs> and of course you can see the cheap tray that I found um, amazingly on my first uh, fire uh, rather of well, this UDS it didn't um, drip a lot of coals into the drum I'm going to be using pecan smoking chunks and Kingsford with most of the smoking chunks at the top of the basket because as it goes to the bottom of the basket, uh, as the fire goes down to the bottom, there of course is going to be uh, less uh, need for smoke because the brisket will be further along. Okay, as you can see, I've got some pecan in there. I've got a little bit of more pecan um, on the top than I probably need only because <clears throat> I'm gonna be seasoning this for a good hour before I put any brisket on it. Um, Normally I wouldn't do that. I'd have it buried down a little further. And over here is my charcoal starter with about 15 or so coals in it. 
We got our coals ready. Ah, ah, step back, Joey. Okay, we got our coals on top. They're going to start. This is the minion method. I'm going to go with a lower, a lower rack arrangement. And I'm going to go ahead and start seasoning this barrel. Hopefully I can get that off. Right now my ball cocks are open all the way. <coughs> and um, I'll come back to this and start taking some temperature. That'll do. It's gonna be delicious. And this should show you. Take a look at it for the seasoning. That nothing really comes off. It's nice and seasoned. Lisa's face been messed up for 10 minutes. Don't do that to your face, honey, don't. Stay away. Sherlock Holmes and his smarter brother Puffy. I'll let you work with that. Told me that more money bring you problems from the gate. The fluffy overweight blind. 